back at it again. Damn it. Shit. Who gets up it? Mim go do the air? I mean, I tell you, I tell you, and I promise you that. Five thousand people at one point, almost five thousand people were uh, affected. Ah, can't. Back at it again. It's been too long since I said those words, and it's good to be back in country. I've been out, stuck, just like so many other Haitians on the other side when they closed the border. Two days before I had to fly in, I was locked out. So many episodes were scheduled. Two months worth of content canceled for good reason. The reason of COVID, the reason why I have this mask on my face. So it goes without saying, I had to make the first episode on COVID. It's been, it's changed so many lives, not, across, not only around the world, but in Haiti as well. So many have been affected, so many have died. So I've had, I've had, I have to make an episode on it, the very first back. So I'm glad you're back. I know you guys have missed, you know, seeing Haiti firsthand through CGNT. But trust me, we ain't gonna miss a week. We ain't gonna miss a new drop. We got so much stuff we gotta make up for and so much stuff we're gonna, we're gonna do. But first and foremost, COVID. COVID, COVID, COVID. That's that one word, that one word that has affected not only the world, wherever you're watching this from, your life has changed. And of course in Haiti, things are different as well. At one point we had over four, almost 5,000 people with positive cases affected. As we're sitting right now, as I'm talking to you right now, the cases have dropped. They're looking at closer to 3,000 cases. So we're so happy that COVID hasn't affected folks, hasn't affected Haiti, a place that lacks hospitals, lacks uh, medical facilities, lacks the infrastructure. If we were to get it at the level that we're seeing in the United States, you were seeing in UK, we're seeing in so many, so many places. So, bonjour, bonne chance. We can say that for sure. But this episode is about not only the return of CGNT, not only the return of getting back to the content and the stuff you love to see and learn about, but also to engage on that topic. I'm gonna take you to the streets. We're gonna go to different places and we're gonna see as we drive around just how folks are actually adhering to the mass requirement and other stuff, right? We're gonna, we're gonna show you that, right? And then most importantly, we're gonna go to three really important centers that have been on the front lines of COVID. Gesco Center, right? I'm going to my but you know, forgive me. That's how we say it. Anglais, <laughs> right? And then we're going to go to Bernard Mevs, right? And then most important, most most critical, we're going to go to Mirabale Hospital, the, one, the first place that was receiving and and helping folks who were affected by COVID here in Haiti. And we have an incredible opportunity. We're, we're, I'll leave you, I'll leave that cliffhanger for you. We have something even real special to show you at Mirabale. It doesn't be worth me driving the hour and a half or so to get over there from, from where I'm at here in Port-au-Prince. Listen, don't turn that dial. We're only getting started. And hey, listen, this means a lot when I say it this time. We're back at it again. Ah! Oh, oh my God, it's race bitch. <laughs> oh, 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 oh my gosh, it's Calvin Drake Production. Of the Jesco Center, uh, an institution that's been here for over 38 years. I mean, we are in the heart of Port-au-Prince. When I say Port-au-Prince, I mean literally across the street is Villas de Gilles, right? That's been making the news and headlines, right, for all the wrong reasons. Just a little further up, 
is City Soleil and a little further down is Matisson. So what we're talking about being a place that is a hotbed for, for, for activity, but also a hotbed for the needy, those who are in desperate, the fringes in a fringe country, this is it. And Gesco has been here taking the front, HIV AIDS or one of the first institutions, organizations helping Haitians. Cholera, one of the first folks uh, on the ground uh, treating victims of cholera. After the earthquake, this place was center number one for helping folks out and, 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 and helping with their needs, medical services, right? And currently, when it comes to COVID, there's a treatment center inside, and the treatment center is helping the thousands who have been affected, not only in Port-au-Prince, not only across in these needy areas here, but all over the country, folks that can be found coming here to be received treatment. They partner with a lot of different organizations, and they're always, always in need of additional uh, aid, additional donations, right? And so you can always check out Google Gesco Center, right? And, and see how you can aid and assist. Because when you assist a center like this, you're helping a frontline organization help Haitians in their time of most need before anyone else is able to mobilize, right? We're in front of Hospital Bernard Mez. Bernard Mez is one of the premier hospitals in Haiti. Whenever, like, the first stop before going to America is coming to Bernard Mez. Now, here's the thing. This hospital has been here since 1994. A cornerstone, a bedrock of legit science, medical science here in Haiti. Absolutely important, right? And for COVID, they've taken the front, they front lines in terms of ensuring that COVID is not the killer as it is in other countries. Inside, there's uh, uh, at least at least 50 beds that are set specifically to handle COVID and COVID victims. Some of the top hospitals, some of the top doctors all over Haiti make it a point to reside and do a residency here for years. The staff at Bernard Mavs, I want to tell you, thank you. You make, you make Haiti better. You're making a difference against COVID and you're appreciated, thank you. It's been a while since we've been here, uh, here in Mayor Bailey Hospital. You remember last time we were out here, we did do a little impromptu walk around and showcase of the facility. But this time, it's, it's just different, right? This time, it's COVID, right? It's a different era, and we're here to really highlight and discuss one of the frontline hospitals that have been fighting to save lives, fighting to keep the population of, of, of Haitians in one piece, right? And, and, and it's been extremely resilient. As I mentioned, the count was up to almost 5,000. We're down to 3,000 here 
and it's gonna be my pleasure to actually show you some of the facilities like ingestion, how folks are being tested, where folks are being quarantined, and we'll go, we'll go as far as they let us to show you just how Haiti is pushing and fighting with against COVID, right? And with me right now, a real special guest, uh, one of the premier doctors in Haiti. If you will it, Dr. Benoit, Dr. Benoit, can you Bienvenido L'hôpital dans le Crivac qui même gagne, par rapport à nous gagnons en Haïti, l'autre part, après le monde ne connaît pas sur l'hôpital, c'est que c'est l'hôpital qui est totalement, et qui n'a pas de soleil, après le monde qui est assuré qu'il est en fonction de n'importe quel moment. Mais, et par rapport à la COVID, qui j'en vois pas Bon, ça nous est capable de dire concernant la COVID. Et nous est capable de dire comme ça que, Jean, Je prétends ni donc moi-même tout me pense que nous atteint pic nous déjà donc et nous en phase donc de crescendo donc pour nous diminuer parce que nous car nous nous-mêmes nous te connaissons souvent plus donc quand nous commençons ça ouais ça même oui dans dans la quantité mal d'apercevoir donc nous va diminuer parce que nous a moins de monde parce que tu gon premier temps donc tu te connais les dans avance pour tu une place disponible Donc, on y a nous toujours des places disponibles. Ah, grâce à Dieu, ça, grâce à Dieu, bon donc, on l'a yes. ça, nous recevons malade. Mm -hmm. Donc, ça veut dire, à partir de ça, nous sommes capables de dire que calme, mm -hmm. nous sommes vraiment dignes. Mm -hmm. Mais, ça nous est capable de dire encore, bon, peut-être, nous ne savons pas, est-ce que c'est est bien que quelqu'un monde qui fait des suppositions Donc, est-ce que ces températures-là, réellement, est-ce que c'est ça, nous avons les immunités croisées qui protègent nous Mais, ça, tout le monde n'a pas tant que le faire, donc, oui. ce n'est pas lui qui est réalisé dans le pays. Mais ce n'est pas parce que tout le monde a respecté tout le principe. Oui. Donc, il fait tout et ça a été demandé. Le principe encore, c'est laver les mains pour vous faire comme vous. Voilà. Yeah, parce yes. que nous, 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 nous jusqu'à présent, nous faisons en face avec une maladie nouvelle. Donc, côté que, il y a deux moyens nous capables de combattre. Donc, c'est prévention. Et puis, si nous avons vu et puis essayer de oui, faire traitement symptomatique. Yes. Yes. Donc ça dit prévention jusqu'à présent donc pour nous-mêmes parce que le traitement on est capable de voir que dans l'autre pays qui mettait à terre, qui mettait le système sanitaire à terre. Mm -hmm. C'est-à-dire que la meilleure façon qu'on y a là pour combattre c'est la prévention. Donc ça dit toujours mettre masse nous mm -hmm. parce que puisque ce maladie qui transmet, on a un monde pas avoir respiratoire, mm -hmm. donc toujours mettre masse nous pour nous barrer. Mm -hmm. Toujours garder distance sociale là, mm -hmm. donc 1 mètre 5, ensuite toujours là. La vie Donc tout ça n'a pas été dans la bouche nous, la vie même. Tout côté nous sorti, la vie même nous. Exactement. Parce qu'il y a un risque. Donc pour, bien qu'on n'a pas de contact avec nous, mais nous n'avons pas de contact avec un objet ou un objet, et puis même on contamine les gens. Donc il vaut mieux que pour toujours la vie même. En fait, les gens, ça nous a fait qu'on c'est nous pour aller et checker, pour nous montrer des facilités qui pour nous n'ont pas pu bien comprendre. A strategy can you use it? So this spot right here is a quarantine zone, right? And this is so this is where if folks uh, have symptoms but are waiting for the test that have been verified as COVID positive, this is a place they're going to hold them and keep them, uh, and, and especially if they're showing symptoms and everything, to make sure you know they don't potentially leave and spread it, right? Let's go inside. So this is where the COVID testing happens. It happens right here on this bus. Imagine folks lay down, they take, they do the swabs, right? And then within X amount of hours, days, they'll find out if they're generally negative or positive, right?
So behind these doors here is where they're holding COVID positive folks. We're not gonna go, we're not gonna go in, right? Just wanna just kind of poke our head in and you kind of see it's, it's, it's a building as so many other buildings here uh, uh, at the uh, Mayor Valley Hospital. Um, but again, within these walls here are COVID positive patients. So right now, there's at least 12 positive COVID patients within these walls here, right? And of course, we're gonna hope and pray that uh, they pull through and, and uh, they're part of the, uh, the, the majority who, who do ultimately pull through and not part of the, the, the percentage that don't, right? And this is why you gotta take this so serious, guys. I know a lot of my followers, that you guys are watching from the United States, you guys are watching from Canada, and, and, and I can't tell you enough, you know, COVID is something, I know you're, you're stuck in the house and, and you, you're tired of COVID, you wanna go out, go back to the bars and the, your restaurants, but listen, until there's a vaccine, right? Until this is officially over, right? You know, we, we have to take it, we have to treat it differently because 12 souls are in here fighting for their lives, right? In Haiti. And that brings another topic, which is coming to Haiti itself. Yeah, I'm here, I'm here because I have, you know, business interests, right? But I'm telling you guys, if you guys don't have a reason necessarily to come to Haiti, don't, because you don't know ultimately if, especially if you don't test yourself, you don't know if you're COVID or positive or negative, that's number one. Number two, we still don't even know the nature of this disease, this virus, where folks who are, who are negative, how long it stays in your blood, and, and, and those, again, folks who may be asymptomatic, right, coming here, infecting, you know, some group of Haitians, it might lead to, you know, them coming here if they're lucky, right? So again, you know, follow the procedures. First and foremost, keep your mask on, wash your hands, but especially in the States, move differently, right? Still adhere to the reality of COVID-19. Uh, So yeah, it's a wrap, guys. We're gonna head home after a, a, a very long day of, of going to different hospitals and different places, different parts around town to show you how folks are, 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 are dealing with COVID-19 in Haiti. Donc, ben nous merci à Pile, merci à Paul pour accueillir avec des nouvelles choses pour nous dire. Donc, merci à Pile. Parce qu'il y a un dernier mot, dernier pas au niveau de la dit comme ça pour nous faire bien là-bas pour notre sens pour pouvoir s'asseoir, ma connais. Le dernier mot, je vais dire que c'est un peu mieux, c'est mieux que maladie de la maladie a bel et bien existé. Donc, suivez tous les conseils de l'hygiène qui est au côté de nous pour nous faire de la prévention parce que c'est une meilleure façon pour nous faire combattre. Merci beaucoup, Dr. Benoît. Les gars, écoutez-le, il est un docteur. Et listen, nous avons tellement de choses à réengager avec vous. Nous sommes juste en train de commencer after being on hiatus for so long. Listen, guys, you already know what it is until we're back at it again, because we'll be back at it again. We'll be back at it again. <laughs>